Do not adjust your screen. Do not adjust the vertical. Do not adjust the horizontal. This is a special edition of a Ask an Engineer or Desk Lady Ada. All combined into one, it's a hack chat. Yay! Yay, hack Yay. chat. Oh. I say hi. Hi. Hi, hi. I'm so chat. big. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why am I so big? Okay, there you go, Lady Ada. Hi. Okay, well, welcome to a special edition of Desk of Lady Ada. This is Daylight Lady Ada, so I, I, I do exist in the daytime. Uh, da, da, da. I don't know what the Hackaday anthem is. Like, you know, I didn't write one when I made the site. should have written a jingle. Hackaday, Hackaday, a Hackaday keeps the feds away. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is a special... Hack chat, as I said, uh, so I'm at my desk here, uh, my lady at a desk, but we're also doing this hack chat with Hackaday, hackaday.io, and Sophie, thanks Sophie for putting this shit together, Ming. Yeah. Uh, it's awesome. So we're going to do a uh, half hour chat, and I'll be answering questions live, and we do live demos that hopefully work, and uh, our topic today is CircuitPython. That's right. Yeah, pretty exciting. So... Um, Maybe you're watching this and you're like, what the hell is CircuitPython? So I thought I'd give like a really quick introduction and then maybe you wanna jump into questions or what do you wanna do after that? Yeah, um, we have questions um, inside of the spreadsheet that's from the chat. Yeah. And there's the chat room. Everyone should be at the hack chat. There's the um, other chats that involve like um, YouTube and Instagram and we're Periscope. Not we're not in, in Twitch. We're not in those places. We're in the Hack Chat, we're but we'll try chat. to we'll try to get to all of them. So um, register on Hackaday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we'll we got some surprises and more. So um, floating circuits. Yeah, so you can see the the stream and more um, in the Hack Chat, and we'll be answering questions. And then you could see Lady Ada doing live code and more. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, yeah. Why don't you start talking about what, okay. what Circuit Python is? So. Circuit Python. Okay, so a lot of people know Python. Python is a programming language. Um, it's an interpreted language. It's really popular, especially um, for beginners. It uh, was uh, invented like maybe like ten-ish years ago, and it's kind of like um, it's got a lot of similarities with both Scheme and Lisp and uh, C. It's kind of it's got you know functions and data structures and lists. Um, Can you type in the chat and say who you are too? Oh yeah. So we got to do text version and uh, we got to do top version. Um, oh right, so I should I have to because they're not watching this. So yeah, yeah, you got to do all. Okay, so uh, about Circuit Python. Well, my keyboard's really uh, loud. So Circuit Python is a version of Python, the language slash interpreter that runs on small microcontrollers. And in particular, we didn't invent CircuitPython at all. Like this is not like a born from our head thing. This is, and is a derivative of MicroPython. And MicroPython is a project by, um, okay, now of course I'm blanking on his name. What, what's his name again? Damien George. Damien George, sorry. Because I was thinking of Guido, the other defender of Python. So Damien George, who is a physicist, um, uh, that was uh, really interested. I don't know why did he invent MicroPython. It was a bet. It was a bet. Okay, no, so, I, I know a little bit of the backstory, and I'm writing a gigantic article about it. So I'll, I'll talk about this one thing. So basically, the microbit um, had a chip that potentially could run um, Python, sort of. And Damien got one. And uh, actually, Tony Nicola has a really good newsletter that we do yeah. about MicroPython, and there's lots of videos and more. But basically, he kind of did the impossible, and he got Python, a version of Python running on what is the micro bit. And it's a different version of micro Python. Keep that in mind. Um, there's micro Python for micro bit. Um, PyCom has a version. Adafruit has an open source MIT licensed one called CircuitPython. And then there's the uh, upcoming port with PyCom and uh, Damien and us. We're going to work on it too, of the ESP32. So anyways, okay. it came from the micro bit world. It, yeah, well, it, I think the first one was the STM32, but when it became, which which we saw, and then it was ported to the ESP8266, and there was a Kickstarter that we even um, had some hardware that we, um, you know, it was, it was designed to run on the Feather. But what was really neat is when um, it, Damien got it working on the micro bit. And so um, the micro bit is uh, 256K flash 16, sorry, maybe, yeah, 256 Maybe it's 128K flash, 
and 16K of RAM. So small. And so when we saw that, and that was, I think, a, like a six months ago, we saw that and it was like, huh, didn't know you could actually do that. So we were like, well, you know, it would be neat if um, we could port um, MicroPython to run on the at sandy 21 prop. So the processor that we're using, and we had to make a couple tweaks to MicroPython to make it work well with the SAMD21. The SAMD21 processor is a Cortex M0 um, from Atmel, now you know microchip. And um, sorry, I like typing and talking at the same time. Yeah, uh, so the the thing that's interesting about this chip is uh, this chip is sort of you know, in my opinion, the next gen at Mega 328. So a lot of people know um, the at Mega 328. It's a very, very, very popular processor, which uh, is using the Arduino Uno and a lot of derivatives. Um, cool thing about the 328 is it's popular. Not so cool, only 32K flash and uh, 2K RAM, and no native USB. Okay, so the SAMD processor, what's nice about the SAMD processor, SAMD has DMA, SPI, I2C, UART, native USB client host, uh, 256K flash, 32K RAM, tons of extras. Um, and it's kind of cheap you know, about two bucks each. So that, those, all those things that were with the circuit, that, that came with the SAMD processor, the fact that it had twice as much memory as a micro bit was like, well, this is really neat. So the downside is that the SAMD doesn't have a radio, but I think that's okay, you know, there's trade-offs. But it has native USB. And so what, um, what happened is we were looking at the SAMD processor and we're like, well, Basically, there's this problem with Arduino. It, Arduino is super awesome. It's amazing. It's great. Um, great. We love it. Use it. But it's too hard to get started. Which is amazing if you think about how um, hard it was to get started with microcontrollers like 10 years ago. Like 10 years ago, it would be like open up the data sheet, get your assembler. So like nowadays, we have to reach more people. Um, C is too hard a language for many beginners. Even though I love C and C++, it's, it's just too tough. Um, you have to know so much to get started. And Python just makes it a little bit easier. Does it make it like infinitely easier? No, it, you, know, you still have to learn a little bit of programming but it does make it easier than C. You don't have memory issues. Um, you don't have to worry about like allocating objects. You don't have to worry as much about um, like functions and scope. I think like a Python makes that um, pretty easy. You don't have to worry about types. You know, that's taken care of for you. Um, you know, uh, floating point versus um, fixed point. A lot, a lot of little details that trip up beginners don't exist. Like you can get started much easier. So, um, we think Python is easier. And Python is taught to tons of kids. It's definitely more popular than teaching C or C++. So, the other problem, another problem that we, we had with Arduino, we, we really like the Arduino ID. I really like it because it's simple, it's compact, it's, it's straightforward to use, but um, Arduino ID doesn't run on Chromebooks. And you need to install a bunch of software. Sometimes that's challenging for students. They may not have access to install software on their computer. And so all of these thoughts were like kind of like in our brains. 
and we're thinking, how can we solve this issue? I mean, it's not a problem to solve. It's not like, oh my God, like the world is going to end if we don't solve it. But what if there was a way to get people programming with electronics where it was so easy that you could basically teach an entire class in 45 minutes? Um, if you've ever seen an Arduino workshop, it takes 30 minutes just to get people's computers set up. I mean, depending on like the drivers and the operating system and where you drag it to and like this version, that version. And I think for more advanced uses, Arduino has a really good place, which is ironic. Like Arduino is considered very beginnery, but it's actually not. It's a quite powerful. I mean, you have like full metal control over registers and like bit banging, whatever. Um, so, right, you know, we're now at this point where maybe we can uh, solve all these issues. So, um, the thing that we like, so okay, so you're like, you're like, what's the point? Get to the point of the story. The point of the story is, I wanted to see, could we design a way to program where you didn't need it a custom IDE, you could program it on a Chromebook, so you didn't necessarily even need drivers for most uses. Um, and what I, you know, it had some benefits, like, you know, you could get started very quickly and iterate very quickly. And so um, we met up with Scott, who uh, was in our show and tells, who's in the chat too. And uh, we were totally like, hey, Scott, you want to just like port MicroPython to this AMD processor? And he was like, I'm game for that. Uh, and so that's what he's been doing for the last couple months. And there's a lot of really neat things that are details, but the details actually kind of make the magic happen. So thanks, Scott, for porting to the SAMD um, and working on these details. Okay, so now that we're, we've done the intro, I want to actually just show how to get started with this board. So the weird thing that you have to think about if you've never used MicroPython or Esprino or anything is there is no compiler, right? Because the problem with um, trying to run stuff on Chromebooks, you can't sell software. And so a lot of times you'd end up having this compiler in the cloud thing. And compiling the cloud is just like, it's kind of a pain because you have to, you know, you have to have internet access, you have to assume that the site's gonna be up forever. Um, so what's neat is there's no compiler. So weird thing number one, no compiler. Uh, you know, you have an interpreter um, interpreted in the chip. Okay. Well, that didn't work out in the chip. You have, to, you have to be careful when typing. So because the interpreter's in the chip, you um, got rid of the need for an IDE, you got rid of the need for a compiler, and you don't have to worry about its versioning as much. I mean, you wanna make sure that people get the right version, but like there's less like, oh, your compiler did this, your compiler did that. Like it doesn't run on Linux. You know, the, the, this version is like 4.8, this version is 5.2, and there's some change. Um, it's all interpreted on the chip, and that gives you a lot of, um, interface power like you can do some really cool stuff so uh, if you look at so I'm gonna be on the video so video demo time um, if you look at my computer so I've got this computer running and if I go to my e drive so I've got you know my computer and I've got like my desk and I got a DVD I have this disk drive called circuit pi and if you look here on this board there's a spi flash chip and that flash chip you know it's uh it's two megabytes of flash it's not that much it's spi it's like you know not that fast but it's okay that two megabytes of flash acts as a hard drive so because this chip has native usb um we show up as a disk this is something that um the micropython boards do as well so this is like totally we got this idea from them. What's neat is we don't have an SD card. It's just like, it's on the board itself. And when you double click on it, that's where your Python files live. Um, and your code lives on the board. So here is um, 
main.py and neopixel.py. So neopixel, as you may guess, is the code that um, makes neopixels go. And main.py is your code. And you can double click it. So like no compiler, no IDE, you just edit in a text editor. Um, I happen to use Emacs, you can also use VI, you can use Atom, you can use any text editor that comes with your computer. You don't need an IDE because again, you're editing the text file directly on the computer. Um, we do have um, a, a simple IDE that is called Moo. It's a micro bit editor that we've asked the person to add support for MicroPython, uh, so the CircuitPython board, and um, they've done it. So if you do want to have like a nice, uh, you know, kid-friendly, easy IDE, you know, it has a REPL built in. So um, um, composite USB means we get Composite USB means uh, mass storage plus uh, USB CVC. So in the device manager, and I'll, I'll finish my demo soon. So in the device manager, it actually shows up as a as a COM port too. So I have a COM port, you know, on on Windows 7 you need a driver. You don't need the the REPL, but it's neat because oh man, did I just close my window? I close my window. One second. Run it again. Um, you can actually start writing code without even needing to write code. So you can start saying, well, you know, hello. You can, you can actually start interfacing with Python immediately. Um, so uh, this is the main.py, for example. I just have this like, you know, really big project here. Um, you know, just temperature calculation. It does, uh, you know, light and sound and um, What's neat is, you know, you, you know, you have capacitive touch on this board, so you can like touch the pads. It has uh, two buttons, temperature sensor, light sensor, uh, speaker output, 10 neopixels, and a microphone and accelerometer. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in there. And um, because we're using that SAMD processor, even though this is running Python, you can also use it with an Arduino IDE. It works just like an Arduino. It's, it doesn't know the difference. You can load Python on it, or you can use Arduino code with it. Um, so maybe I'll just show like a really quick demo of just like how to um, make some new code. So let's say I want to stop running main.py. I'm going to rename this my um, test main. So the files now changes. So you notice the code stopped because there's no main.py anymore. And then uh, let's save this as our main.py. So we have a new main.py. And then Hold on. Let me. Okay. And then let's also open the uh, original file because I don't, I don't have it all memorized yet. Oh, sorry. One moment. Okay, so you start with, you know, you want to import all your libraries. So we have a NeoPixel library, for example. And then um, you can make your NeoPixel strip just by making an object. You know, there's a defined pin called NeoPixel, and then you want to make 10 NeoPixels. So that's pretty easy. And then what's really cool is, like, you notice there's, like, no setup. There's no loop. There's no pound defined. Um, there's imports, but I don't think they're so bad. And then um, let's just say uh, running, running code. And uh, let's see. So the nice thing about and the NeoPixels is the way they work is you actually set, it's an array, basically. You set them to the values you want, and you type np write. So let's just make them all uh, red, for example, light red. So just like any Python, you type in 4i in range 10. You can also do map and stuff. But I, again, I'm not a super Pythonista, um, so I'm just going to do this as I, the way I know how to do it. So NeoPixel I equals, and then you know red, green, blue. So let's do 10 in red, 0 in green, 0 in blue. And then uh, NP, I think it's right. And then what's cool about this is that when you save the code, it'll run automatically. So I just made them all red. OK, so that's kind of cool. Um, but let's say I want to have something like where it like swirls around or something, or I don't know. So you know while while true, 
And then, uh, yeah, I don't know how to how to do mapping stuff, so let me just. This is totally not the right way to write this Python code, but let's live. Um, so uh, let's do that, and then uh, let's have another incrementer uh, for uh, J in range 10, and then we'll make uh, J, the, you know, the one that we're incrementing around, we'll make that red. And then we can do, I think, this is where it's like, okay, I don't remember how to do uh, sleep, so I think I'm going to do import time, make sure that works, and then time dot, oh yeah, so I've got sleep here, just make sure that works. Okay, cool, that's how I do sleep. So import time, and then time sleep. So I think what this should do is make it so it swirls around. We'll see. Oh, and then when once you're using the REPL, you actually have to uh, kick it into starting the code. All right, so great. So now I've got the I got the uh, the LED running around faster. And let's say I'm like, okay, I want it brighter. Again, the neat thing is there's no compiler. Like I'm not writing code, compiling, uploading, looking at the output. You know, I just change this to 100 and I save it and it immediately loads the code and runs it. And it's not like, okay, I like red, but maybe I want it to be like purple. Okay, so save that. It swirls around, now it's purple. Now I'm like, I wanna go faster. Change this time sleep to be uh, 50 milliseconds. Faster, okay, I want it even faster than that. Very, very fast iteration, very quick development, you're not because the interpreter is running on the chip, you don't have, I mean, I know it's like, yo, lady Ada, like, you know, you don't have to UV erase like your EEPROM chips anymore. Like uploading code to flash, it's very fast. It is fast, but it's not fast enough. If you can get it from a one minute or 30 second upload and debug cycle to a one or two second debug cycle, that makes it even more powerful. So that's kind of the, what, what I like okay. about this. Yeah, fast this is. Okay, so now I'm done with the demo. So now okay. I can actually answer questions. Okay, first one, I'm going to type it in the chat. So you can see it in the chat. You can type and say yeah. at the same time. Any intent to use the ESP32 for future circuit Python powered boards? Yeah, the, um, thanks to um, PyCom deciding they're going to release their core code under MIT license and, and collaborate with the rest of the MicroPython team, it's pretty likely we'll have a, um, a MicroPython powered circuit playground with ESP32 at some point. Yeah, you could type that in the chat. Okay. I'll uh, try to do should, should I put the question or just the... No, uh, I, put the okay. I, I put the question in there. Yeah. Um, ESP32 is great. Uh, PyCom has okay. uh, decided to contribute the code. Okay, next question. You ready? Yep. Okay, uh, this is from Todd Bot. Arduino config shows D crystal list. That's awesome. I love crystal list USB. Any timing issues when not plugged in USB? Um, so the crystal list thing, okay, so this is something interesting about the SAMD processor. Well, the SAMD processor has so many neat things. So the SAMD processor has the ability to sync with the USB um, uh, starter frame pulse. Um, there is uh, trimming info in the uh, fuses, so, uh, not the fuses, sorry, the uh, NVRAM, NVRAM, so you can tune it, never had an issue. So okay. yeah, what's neat about that is you can do stuff like make very small micro Python boards that don't have a crystal. Okay, Same uh, next cache. one, you can kind of retype what we did before. How's the relationship with micro Python and team with PyCom? Understand the desire to fork, but similar implementations are better for community. Um, they're working together on the ESP32 yeah. fork. Yeah, they so. are working together now. MIT license for the win. Yeah, and I'll post a link too. Uh, Damien okay. 
keep on the ESP32 uh, Expect more hardware soon. Okay, next up. Ready? Yeah. Is there going to be a Tendoff feather wing? There are currently micro Python loops for different IMUs and barometers. Um, combination would be awesome. I designed one myself. SMB soldering logic server really is annoying. So you can answer that in the chat. Yeah. Um, for uh, Doff feather wing, we um, will likely go with NXP to chip uh, solution. Um, because BNO055 and friends can uh, be, um, I don't say flaky, but they can have uh, uh, weirdnesses on some chips. Um, and also they need clock stretching, which not every chip supports. Okay, next up. We're gonna keep going. Yeah. Um, this is from Renmir, hey Renmir. Yeah. Um, how good is a circuit Python for graphics? Can you write a computer program game? And are there any plans to go that direction to make things easier? Yeah, I was actually thinking um, uh, you could have a TV out from a pen and drive a TV um, from like any of these uh, circuit Python boards um, with some C helper functions could make some simple games like Pong, Snake, etc. Okay. Last question from the spreadsheet. Uh, how complicated is a switch to a board using C or Arduino CircuitPython if the board is already supported? So as long as you yeah, have the bootloader and... Oh, uh, uh, it's super easy. Um, so what's neat about the, um, uh, the CircuitPython boards will have a dual bootloader. Um, the bootloader is both uh, both uh, BOSA and mass storage. Um, it was written by Microsoft. They're going to release it soon, so I can't. It's it's MIT licensed. Um, you can um, update firmware by dragging a file, and I can show that really quickly. Just demonstrate. So this is the Circuit Python. If I double click this, it'll um, boot into the bootloader and the bootloader is a um, is also a disk drive, but this disk drive is much smaller. And then you, your, your firmware is called UF2. You drag the firmware file on and it will uh, load the firmware for you if you're doing Python or from Arduino, it looks just like an Arduino zero board. Okay, yeah. and then for the folks in the video, um, we're answering questions in the Hackaday chat. We got yeah. through all the spreadsheet ones, so we're there in the chat. So uh, Scott, um, Tony, and Lady Ada are there. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll answer anything if I, if I can, too. Yeah. I'm answering some questions. So Talbot asked, uh, the BOSA and MSD bootloader is cool. Arduino uses BOSA. BOSA. Can't wait to see MSD bootloader. Wonderful work on 7011. Um, the answer is, uh, it's 8K of flash, so if you have 8K of flash available, that's how big the bootloader is. Okay, there's another question about... Um, sorry, I thought I saw another question. Will you guys or anyone you know be adding Android app to use a web REPL for MicroPython on the CircuitPython platform? Well, ideally, you know, hopefully we won't even need to use um, an app. But the thing is, because it's mass storage, if your Android device can show you disk drive files, which I think some tablets can do, if you can see files from a disk drive, then um, you would be able to use it as a uh, way to edit files. So anything, like basically, it shows up as a USB key. Okay. Okay, two more minutes, and then we're leaving, but um, folks can hang around in the chat.
Yay. So yeah, so I'm gonna actually show real fast. Oh, can you, um, well, I guess I can just hold it here. So we also have a version um, that's like Arduino shaped. So that'll be fun because we want to be able to use our shields and stuff with it. So again, it works just like, you know, an Arduino Zero, but it has an extra SD card, in, uh, the um, USB key interface with the SPI flash. And then um, there's also a little Gemma that is running the SAMD uh, 21E. It's a much smaller pin-wise version, but it's the same flash and RAM. And what's uh, interesting about this is because there's no SPI flash, instead um, it uses part of the um, chip flash as a disk drive, about like 60K or 40K of the storage. So it does show up as a disk, but it shows up as a very small disk. It's not like the best, you know, if you want like to write really complicated programs and have all your files with you, um, definitely going with the boards that have the SPI flash. But having something really small and low cost, I think would be fun for people who want to play with MicroPython. Um, you know, and if you're writing code that's only like, you know, a couple hundred lines, you don't need all that extra space. Okay. Carol asks, is the Gemma available now? No, I'm still, uh, I'm still working on it, but it'll be, I actually have no CircuitPython boards available now. This is all uh, beta people. Um, but we will have it out in a couple months at, at worst, hopefully sooner. The, the hardware is done. We're just uh, nailing down a little interface stuff, trying to make sure that we have the right pinouts and everything. Because uh, you can select from a lot of pins. We want to make sure we get the right pins. Okay. All right, lady, I have to get you back to work. Yes. More hardware. Yes. Yep, you must do more hardware. Of course. I gotta work on getting the demo working so I can get one to Carol. All right, so that was the Hack Chat. Yay! Thanks everybody. Um, go to hackaday.com, go to hackaday.io. Um, if you're just seeing this now and you weren't able to be in it because you know, this is recorded and goes to the internet, uh, make sure you sign up because we'll probably try to do future ones and all that. Um, special thanks to Tony DeCola and Scott who answered great questions and they're doing really good work with all the cool things with MicroPython, CircuitPython. Yeah, Python, we're just getting started. And more. I mean, uh, check out. Um, uh, Tony's got a whole bunch of guides on learn.adafruit.com. Yeah, I put a, I put a, chat, I put oh, a uh, link. I already did that. Thank you. So check those out. We've got a lot of videos that we've already done. Again, uh, they're not out for the public yet, uh, so the people who win the boards are going to be uh, super duper special uh, people. We'll give away five of these um, circuit playground boards. Yeah. And uh, look out for, you know, we want to make sure we do this right. We want to get it out and be, it's like, it's good. So that's why we're spending a little extra effort. Yeah. But I think it's yeah. really, really change how people learn electronics and mm -hmm. hardware yeah. and coding. So from uh, what our, the our boat pirate, of Lady Ada. <laughs> our pirate Broadcasting Headquarters. Yes. Trust your techno lust. Th yes, thank you. Thank you. Got it. I got it. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, everybody.